Peace, what's good family? This is David back again with another Instagram Live. And today I wanted to be talking to you guys about a incredible experience that I had yesterday when um, I finally got in the mail these Amanita Muscaria mushrooms that uh, I ordered a couple of weeks ago. And I found out about them from my friend Holistic Health with Harry. And he told me that um, these mushrooms are uh, psychedelic and they have all kinds of like healing effects on so many people being able to reverse, you know, depression and all kinds of like stress and anxiety. And um, I didn't know that it was possible to find these online that were legal, but these are 100% legal and anybody can buy them. And uh, they're actually like really cheap and um, so powerful but you have to take a lot. That's the only thing uh, that I've noticed about it because I took about 12 grams or maybe even 15. And um, I went and got into a meditation and then took a shower afterwards. And that's when it started to kick in. And um, it was maybe like 45 minutes after I had eaten them. And they actually tasted really good. Like if you enjoy the taste of mushrooms, then you'll definitely like these. And um, I'm going to leave a link to where you guys can buy it for sure in another post um, and use a code because you can save 10% if you use a code and actually gain um, different like income that way if you wanted to support them. And um, I realized that like in the showers, just my whole consciousness was moving towards uh something very altered perception and um i went and watched this video from somebody named actualized.org on youtube that is my favorite youtuber and uh i got some like the most powerful insights i was just watching his videos for hours while i was outside and walking around and like shoveling people's snow and stuff and um just like insanely um blissed out for the whole experience anthony says the desert fathers ate those for long traveling it would time warp them believing they arrived at their destination quicker and that definitely resonates with me um i i really feel like this there's so much uh powerful potential within the the magic you know, that's why I call them magic mushrooms. It's very real. And um, when I was experiencing uh, this unity with God or source or oneness, whatever you want to call it, I was realizing that everything that I believe to be true is an illusion. And um, I was looking at my hands and noticing that like all of the different um, beliefs that I have about my hand ranging from that it's a mixture of atoms and molecules or that it's a bunch of shapes and colors or um and anything that i can use to like perceive my hand um and just stripping away and realizing that all of that is just stories like even science what i realized is that like people say that anything that's not based in science is like illusion but when you look and dissect science, it's all based upon um, theories and words and uh, like ultimately it's science that's the illusion and the reality is just consciousness. That's the only thing that really exists. And um, I've just been so inspired by the school I'm going to as well right now to study and learn about this because uh, I'm majoring in something called the science and technology of consciousness right now. Um, and it's all these different assignments to show you that the true nature of reality um, can help you to unlock your highest potential when you can tap into it and just like perceive the world in a way that um, you're kind of free of all illusions and, you know, perception is really everything. 
uh, and and that's how you can gain access to all kinds of abilities and powers that you have inside of you that uh, you haven't been able to recognize before in your life because you've been programmed by society, by school, and uh, all kinds of things within the way that we're programmed to just, you know, move from one thing to the next, get that instant gratification. And uh, I noticed that during my experience, like, just having flashes of um, all the things that I'm like doing on for example if I'm scrolling on Instagram or if I'm scrolling on YouTube or something like that and I see all these different videos just like flashing by and it's like overloading my system and I don't even realize it while I'm doing it but then looking back on it I can see that it's uh got like a detrimental effect and people can use tools like this app Instagram for um, growing themselves or they can use it as a distraction and uh, hey on the call uh, I guess he has some insights that he wants to share hey what's up bro yo what's up man I'm, I'm good How doing good doing good so I was watching your videos, man, and I had to join, yo. Yeah, this is a really deep topic that I'm going into right now, just talking about the uh, experience I had with my, my mushrooms and um, noticing that really uh, everything in this reality is kind of an illusion and when we alter our perception to realize that we have so much uh infinite potential mm -hmm. then uh we can seriously manifest anything that we want within our lives and uh basically unlock our highest potential and so that's kind of the work i've been doing for like five years but now i'm just starting to realize that um you know any single circumstance that I find myself in, I have the power to choose how I'm going to perceive it and respond to it. And uh, I don't have to um, subjugate myself to any of the kind of programs that like society is indoctrinated within me. Especially I was getting into social media as well and can be used as a tool, but also be used as a distraction. Because I noticed during my experience that like, I was reminiscing on how, like, when I'm scrolling Instagram, I see all these different uh, picture uh, videos and pictures just so rapidly, and it just, like, fires up the dopamine within the system and just completely overloads it, and then I don't realize it till after. And uh, yeah. something that is truly being formed as a weapon against us, as with ma many other things, and I think uh, has to be put awareness on it to, to be able to transcend it. And that's really what the goal is to just transcend all of the things that, uh, we see that are not serving us, you know? Yeah. And you know, what's so, um, like so dangerous about, um, like psychedelics though, is that not even like for us, like the consumers, but for, um, society as a whole is like, it truly, uh, it dismantles um, the cultural and social boundaries that was set up by social engineers. Like, um, like everything has like a like a label on it. Like real estate. Like this is my property. That's your property. Um, everything is mine. What's mine is mine. What's yours is yours. And what psychedelics, what it does, I feel like it shreds that, and it makes people want to share and. Um, uh, kind of uh i don't know i feel like it puts everything in reverse kind of in that aspect you know what i'm saying yeah definitely um it's it's incredible how much like programming um with the social engineering that you've said is is gone on and the way that like people um feel like 
they have to live their lives. You know, especially when I was living in Ecuador, I realized that there's so much more out there that uh, we can just be living in um, a harmony with nature or in a lifestyle that's like completely in balance with everything that we truly want. And um, like a lot of times people just go with what they feel is uh, going to be like accepted by society or like normal or uh, something that's going to make their family proud. Especially for me, that was a really big um, blockage towards, you know, just like acting on the things that I really wanted to do within my life. And uh, I, I realized, you know, you have to just listen to yourself ultimately and, and uh, know thyself. You know, that's really where all of it stems from. And getting from that place, you, when you know yourself, you can, you can uh, basically choose, you know, whatever <laughs> path you want. And you're clear on what you want because that's most people don't even really know what they want. And if you don't, then how can the universe ever give it to you? So you have to be really clear on that. Yeah, it's truly, um, it's great, you know, being, um, I, I hate using the word like spiritually awakened because I know I'm not like all knowing yet, you know, like I'm not someone who like claims to know the truth to everything. But um, I noticed that things when you're more spiritually inclined and you live a more spiritually inclined lifestyle, um, uh, things really do change. Like I noticed that even when I was going through like, uh, depression and stuff, I noticed like beforehand, before I was even like spiritually inclined, like when I was younger, depression sucked. But when you like, even when you're spiritually, uh, like you're spiritually in tune and everything, being depressed is so much different. It's like a spiritual kind of depression. It's like, yeah, like, circumstances kind of suck right now but i know that it's for the betterment of my own like soul like you know what i mean it's like a lesson or something um and then uh at that time when i was going through i know i'm not trying to make this a testimony but like at that time i started taking uh psychedelics when i was going through that and then like it completely like i don't know like morphed my sense of uh self to the point where it's like I'm what I'm feeling isn't even in fact my own feelings it's mm -hmm. actually like other people projecting um I don't know just like the world projecting I feel like I'm directly affected by society though when I'm like on psychedelics too yeah the the way that um a lot of our perception of reality works is directly affected by uh, what we see in the external. So I guess, you know, for most people, it, it seems that um, the, the external is what controls most of all of their emotions and feelings and uh, emotions are what drive people to um, more than anything, really, you know, like people don't realize it, but especially if you're into marketing, then you know that people make decisions only based on, emotions pretty much all the time and so um it can be used as a way to sort of manipulate people and that's what it does within marketing and i'm not saying that's necessarily a good or a bad thing but um when you can actually learn how to manipulate it into a sort of uh beneficial way for you when you can actually sort of start to start to see it as a lesson just as you were saying when every single um circumstance even if it's like a, a bad situation that you're in you find yourself in this depression well you can see that as a tool for you to teach other people how to get out of that and um you know that's what i really see myself doing and i see that um in every experience that i'm having like it's it's I'm like, so my dream is to be like a life coach and like, I'm the ideal client. So I'm looking at every single situation in my life. I'm like, what would I say to this client to help them in this situation? But the client is me. So I look at it that <laughs> I'm always coaching myself. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like 
that is the highest, one of the highest uh, levels of um, sort of awareness that you can reach, that levels of consciousness that you can reach. Um, but I, of course, there's, you know, this is only just a glimpse of what I can actually uh, use this kind of foundation for, you know, this is sort of like the foundation for everything. So it's truly infinite how many directions that could take. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like the, um, I, I, I've been watching your, uh, your whole journey, you know, when you're out in, uh, Ecuador, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've been watching, I've been watching all the videos you uploaded. And, um, at that time I was thinking like, um, wow, to go without like, western um culture for that long that has to be like such a break on the soul like you know what i mean like because the western society will destroy you especially if you're trying to uh if you're one who's like who wants to be spiritual you know what i mean and be spiritually inclined but don't have the uh the discipline to do so i mean i found myself in like a loop you know what I mean? For like a long time. And then what I needed personally, though, was uh, also structure, like waking up, meditating, um, uh, you know, sage in my room every uh, well once a week. Um, you know, I need but I, I'm someone who like needs structure, you know what I mean? And uh, without that structure, oh, my gosh, it's like. I my I noticed, like, also my ways of thinking became uh, more carnal became more um i don't know kind of like infantile honestly i hate to use that word but it's the truth you know yeah definitely i mean having that kind of daily habit that daily routine is essential for me as well that's why um every day i go on to this uh account love all 5d for a breath work session and that's like um eight 30 in the morning and then I do um, meditation with a group at 10 30 in the morning every day and tomorrow I'm going to be leading it for the group so um, I'm going to like post about that if you want to join you can I'll send the links out um, and I feel like it's like completely sets the struck like the whole um, mood for the rest of the day you know like breath work and meditation are just like the two critical things that I need to have a structure with to do every single day. And it's just becomes like breathing when uh, you place that amount of uh, priority on it. And, you know, you can do that with anything as well. And, and when you do that, then um, it sort of becomes your anchor towards uh, grounding yourself and not allowing anything to control you or um influence your your reality except you mm -hmm. yeah so i have a question like what made you want to uh go out to uh like bug out and and like go off the grid over to uh ecuador is it because of the same reason like you needed your soul to get a break uh definitely yeah um well not even just a break but just like a breakthrough I guess that would be a better word for it to sort of just like uh, experience what a life um, where I feel like I'm in complete dream like I'm living my dream life basically you know and I I, I feel like um, that's what heaven on earth is for anybody you know just living your dream life um, and it's not necessarily just like based in um, fantasies or things like that, but it's based upon like when you get to the deepest um, layer of yourself and you like uncover what do you truly want out of life, then you um, find a way to actually merge with that uh that version of that or that timeline or that um part of you that 
life is fully in alignment with that. And then you just shift your whole um, awareness towards that. And like people call it um, timeline shifting or dimension hopping or things like that. And uh, that's what I learned from a lot of different research that I've done is that it's like really widely used for people within uh, all walks of life. And um, that's how like a lot of miracles are achieved in this and what we know in, in history and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes like, um, I feel like when we, uh, when we indulge in um, uh, like psychotherapy, uh, meditation and even uh, psychedelic experiences and you know what I mean? Like deep spiritual um, practices like that. I literally feel as though it's like the replay of uh, human history. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it feels like that. It feels like that. It feels like I'm doing something um, ancient. And I feel like you notice when you uh, I've heard something online where uh, if you meditate with certain fingers, like some people go like this, some people go like this. I feel like one is uh, like. And I don't know this for a fact, you can actually look this up, though. Um, one of them is like represents water. So if you want to tap into your emotions um, or the past, I remember I, I held it like this one time. And I know that this one's the water one, but um, I was meditating for like 45, 45 to like 50 minutes. And I remember like, like being present. And then the memory of me playing baseball with my dad, like came up when I was like six or seven years old, something that I really wouldn't remember. But for some reason it came up like that. And um, there's ones, I think if this is fire, and if you like, if you meditate with those, because there's some kind of like energy point that someone was trying to explain to me up on YouTube. And uh, that's for like the future to tap into future events and uh, things like that. And I find it so interesting. It's like my mind is like always learning something new. And for a while, you know, I was stuck in uh, religion for a little bit. Um, you know what I mean? Before I went through a transformation again and realized, you know, we literally know nothing, you know, and knowing nothing makes you kind of know everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Wow. <clears throat> I mean, with uh, the story of the meditation that you were talking about, like, I just feel like that really struck a chord with me because um, when, like, you go deep into meditations, you start to resurface a lot of, like, the maybe – traumas but that wasn't even a trauma that was like a happy event and so like what i do with um my twin hearts meditations every day is like you recall different happy events and things like when you feel like you're in a um blissed out state or whatever like and you can use that and share that kind of energy with uh like the whole entire world and that's basically what the whole focus of the meditation is, is doing. And um, so that's really tapping into the true power of the meditation. And especially when you're doing it with other people, you're generating a sort of like um, a connection between everybody where they can all use their power towards this one thing. And that's why you see in countries like Thailand when they do a million people meditating at once and then the whole crime rate goes down for uh like 50 percent for like uh huge periods of time and um for me i feel like that's one of the greatest services that i can do not only for myself but for my impact on the world is um utilizing that pow that power of tapping into those uh higher states during the meditation and um you know with the pure intention of furthering the advancement of everything uh, in existence you know and we don't have any clue as you said what is out there what and uh 
whether all these religions are telling the truth or whether it's aliens or whether it's Anunnaki or whether it's this or that. But um, what you can do is, you know, you set that pure intention for the further, the best advancement of all that exists. And then, so whatever it is that's truly out there, um, you're setting that connection with it and uh, realizing that you are one with it. And um, from there, like, basically you have nothing to fear and uh, nothing to worry about. And so you can live the good life and like the good life is the God life, you know, just like how connected, how um, much are you living with in a God-like state or in a connection to God or however you want to frame it. But um, that that's really just what life comes to when you get to this kind of stage of just realizing that, you know, it's all within our hands, you know, like the, yeah. and it's the power to change anything. It's all within us. Exactly. And, and the way I look at, um, like different, uh, spiritual teachings and, uh, religions that are out there, like, you know, you got the whole religious supermarket, um, that is pretty much presented to us at an early age. And, um, but instead of it being something like adding a negative, um, connotation to it, it's like, I like to look at the world as kind of like an art form and it, um, all these religions, like, let's say like, it's a huge, um, like mosaic and all these, let's say it's a stained glass window, actually like life is like a huge stained glass window and all these um little tiles uh mosaic tiles are the like religions and different sectors of spiritual beliefs not one of them is wrong but all of them are necessary to create the image of the real world and and um some tiles are a little darker than others and not as much like sunlight shines through them i feel like and um but you can choose to focus on one tile and admire the beauty from it. Or you could like take a step back and look at the whole piece, mm. you know? And um, that's something that I've learned to do. It's like looking at one star in the night sky. Like you can look at the brightest star, the North star, where you could like pan out and like look at the whole picture. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's literally what I was doing with my hands yesterday when I was taking the mushrooms, like seeing you can zoom in. A million times just looking at your hand or you can zoom out and see the whole universe whoa <laughs> like literally the power of the human mind and we have uh most of the time not even any kind like any kind of percentage of what we could really be tapping into you know but it, it all comes back to just being present in this moment you know that's that's really it yeah what um now just your input here um what do you do when you're like let's say uh and i don't mean for this to sound mundane but what what's your take on um someone being interested in you or you being interested in someone else but they're not on the uh level of um and i'm not trying to make it sound like you're developing an ego or something that doesn't exist or um self-exalting but what do you do when someone is uh not on the same level of thinking as you like the same like wavelength and they're trying to have a committed uh relationship or something uh well i don't really feel like it's um that important to me whether somebody has the same kind of like perspective or viewpoints uh or is sort of like you know anywhere it doesn't matter to me where anybody's at. It just, what matters to me is, are you interested in growing and, and learning and living the life to the fullest or not? And if you are, then I'd like to um, build with you and we can like grow and build this new earth that is, you know, happening in one way or another. We can either like create the new earth that we want, which is like this heaven on earth that I, I was talking about uh, together, um, 
And like, if not, then I guess, you know, I feel like it's just knowing that maybe we have two different paths that are not aligned. And so it's just all about alignment, you know, just, and whatever's meant to be will be. That's really all it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. And like people sure. that are people that are not on your sort of like wavelength or your frequency or vibration, they just naturally sort of um, separate away from you. And then people that um, you that you're attracting, you know, through the way that you live your life, they come to you without you having to force anything or trying to do anything. So. Um, there's no need to sort of like try and like put a judgment on people and say like, Oh, I, I want to be, um, like this person is cool. I, I want to surround myself with them. Um, or this person is like, whatever, I don't want to surround myself with them. You just sort of like be yourself and then whatever comes, uh, into your awareness, you know, that's yeah. whatever you, you have going for you and, and so like you just sort of see your external reality as a reflection of whatever's going on in the inside yeah exactly i feel like exactly what you said once you you are your um like authentic and pure self in that pure state then like people will pop up into your vicinity like people who are meant to be there and um but uh i also feel like the most difficult thing is um trying hard not to set um like expectations you know what i mean like that's something that i still am uh working on even with friends like even with friends um too much intention and too much expectations um you know hoping that i could have a um a uh, decent conversation with people like a deep conversation because you know i don't really appreciate small talk but uh i mean i do to a certain extent but i want to talk about something like this with people and uh with people that i i date and people that i'm friends with but um i'm often let down because i can't really talk to people without going fourth or fifth or sixth dimensional and <laughs> it's like you know yeah i understand that for sure I mean, just look at the way that, like, this live manifested. You know, I just went on talking about that kind of stuff that you just said. And then you came on, what got divinely aligned. And then um, that's how we're here right now. So it's just, like, in every single moment, um, you just express from that level. And it doesn't have to be with your words. You just, like, vibrate at that level. And... Um, if uh, people can't handle it, then they, they'll experience that, like they basically want to don't want to be around it because um, it's too much for them. And then people that actually would like to uh, like grow in that energy with you, then they'll be the ones that are gonna like stick around with you. So, you know, that's how it kind of goes for me. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes like even trying to um like explain this to other people trying to uh explain like basically like where we're coming from like what we're talking about right now um it like the human language is just so like limited and so uh it's so hard trying to describe and get a message across to someone else that's uh for, and this is, I'm just, I can only speak on my experience, but, um, but yeah, it's just extremely difficult trying to describe everything and, uh, making sure that they get the full message and the full, uh, teaching. Like if I could, that, that's, and that's the power of like psychedelics too, that they offer is that like, I feel like it shows you what I mean. Like it shows you what I'm thinking. It shows you what I'm, uh, instead of telling you and describing it to you it just kind of shows you, you know, and that's the way the universe is kind of like telling us it's like an advanced technology that's beyond human words, beyond little mouth sounds, beyond um, all those things. It's just like, 
straight up just showing you. And I, I can't wait for, like, maybe through virtual reality we could get that someday where we could show people what we mean rather than trying to explain it through words. That would be such a um, an advancement in um, communication and everything. Yeah, it's so wild to, like, think about the world of uh, future possibilities with virtual reality. I was watching this show called Upload on Amazon Prime, and it literally has uh, this future reality that seems like could be within the next five or ten years where people are um, basically able to have, you know, the Google Glasses. You know, we have these Google Glasses right now where you can sort of, like... Um, be in your own kind of world like while you're engaged in this physical reality you'll be like looking at your screen but your screen is not an external phone it's like your virtual reality consciousness <laughs> don't need the um the you know the vr headset you literally it's like in your brain whatever microchip whatever um mm -hmm. but that's like the kind of thing that's literally being pushed out and it's already available in some kind of form and it's only getting closer and closer to being internal you know rather than having this external glasses or headset or whatever and um when humanity reaches that stage you can be with your family members and like think that like you're paying attention they'll think that you're paying attention to them but you can be like doing a million things at once you know <laughs> and it's like uh at that point the the way that human hu humans are able to communicate with each other it's like lost and like that's what we're already seeing right now so much with with uh smartphones technology right now just like people you know stuck into their phones when you're walking by in, in public and not really caring about another human being as much as I definitely saw in Ecuador where it was the opposite, where everybody would always stop and ask, how are you? Like, and how's your day going? And people are fully immersed into this reality, you know, rather than into their smartphones or. Yeah. And you notice how different it is, right? Like what from being in Ecuador, being, uh, like fast forward 2021 in America, you see people, everyone's walking around looking like sub zero and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, with their cell phones on their, like to their face and everything. It's, uh, it's a shame, but I mean, we are in the age of Aquarius where, um, you know, hu basic human rights and, uh, human, uh, basically just, yeah, basic human rights are stripped because it's all about the sign of Aquarius. Obviously it's all about detachment. Apparently, like, the best, like, uh, age to live in was Leo because you could literally bug out, go off the grid, and, like, not be a part of society whatsoever, and it was okay. You know, it was fine. You could literally just walk out of your house and be like, I'm going to live in the woods somewhere, and it was allowed, you know. Um, but now, being in the age of Aquarius and, uh, like you said, with all those technology advancements, um, I'm a little, I mean, I feel like, I kind of mixed emotions about that, especially when you brought up the chip that that's uh, going to be internalized. See, I'm afraid that they're going to try and store our consciousness and like trap us forever in that little chip, because what if we die? Like, you know what I mean? Well, we are going to die. Our physical vessel is going to die. But what if they could activate that chip and like instead of going to like or being reincarnated, if you believe in that, um, instead of going to heaven or being reincarnated or whatever it is you believe they actually loop your consciousness back to like another individual who has the chip in their brain. I don't, I don't know. I'm like on a little rant with that, but you know what I mean? Like instead of like the DMT being released when you die and um, your mind perceiving you to be somewhere else, what if they just, with that chip, they were able to control your afterlife with that. There's a show called afterlife. I think that I also saw that literally that's exactly what happens in the show where um, you can, it's also an Amazon prime. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's called, no, it might be called something different. I'll make sure, but literally you will plug yourself in right before you die. So if you're in a hospital. Um, you have the ability to choose it. Um, or 
if you signed up before, you know, you're, before you died, then they have permission to sort of um, take on control of your consciousness after you die. And so what happens is you will see just complete darkness and you're, then somebody will come and speak to you um, and say, like, like, help you to get your awareness back. And um, then, like, the person will sort of guide you and help you sort of remember uh, what kind of life you had. And then you, they show you this, <laughs> like, community that they've constructed from, like, the virtual reality. And it's, you know, just like a Minecraft simulated virtual world or whatever. And it's like you people will pay money in their real life, like this life, so that they can have it's like a retirement home, but it's like for but forever. And they save up all their money so that they can instead of saving up for retirement and stuff, they'll save up to be able to live into like this sort of virtual world when they die because the reason why they do it is they can contact people that are still living and they can have relationships with people that are still living in this world. But um, if you see movies like Transcendence, um, like they, so like Johnny Depp, he gets his consciousness put inside of the computer and um, people are asking like, is that really him or is it something else? And like <laughs> what ends up happening is the computer it's like supercomputer and then it um, has like the real intentions to like kind of destroy humanity or whatever. Um, and like, so you sort of compare that to this show and it's, it's like, you just question what is it that you're speaking to if you would be speaking to somebody in an afterlife in like this kind of like virtual scenario, is it really them or is it their, you know, what is it that it's that, stays with you in the afterlife you know and it's i mean for me for my contemplation i would say it's consciousness um and like whatever sort of um consciousness that exists like within that kind of virtual reality i think it's like like nothing compared to what <laughs> a natural um death would be like you know and so many people are it just shows that like the primary root of um fears is death like people are just afraid of dying um but if you look at my instagram bio bio it literally says um if you if you live without ever dying then you die without ever having lived something like that where it's basically like you have to face your death before you actually die. And that doesn't mean physically, but it means like from an ego death. And then uh, you actually get to see what you can actually live in this life to sort of prepare you for the next one. And, you know, you sort of yeah. don't, you don't have all these attachments to, to things of the physical world yeah exactly and and um i like that that quote you said because it's like you notice that even with um people that are in old age like it, you notice that like the most simplest things like make them so happy and so like uplifted like um it's like as you're getting close to death the more alive you become and uh that's so easily like recognizable in uh, older folks and uh, people who are like in like nursing homes or just at home being taken care of. Like they, you notice like they, the simplest things in their life makes them the most happiest. Right. You know? So um, I definitely like, I felt that, that, uh, that statement you had made. Yeah. That, that's so true. For sure. Yeah. I just got to say, like, thank you so much for hopping on with this, um, this conversation. Like, this is getting to, like, a really beautiful way for me to just get out all the things that I knew, like, I had to say. And um, I hope to, like, keep making more lives and getting more people on. Like, this is just 
the best way for me that I feel to to sort of um, you know share and express myself, get all the things that you know I know that can really help other people um, because this is sort of just like taking a, a look at reality without uh, sugarcoating it. <laughs> you know, that's what we're doing. And um, when you sort of just see things as they are, then like you live life as, as you know um, is best for you. And so that's really the greatest gift that we can give to anybody is just by like helping people, um, not necessarily by saying that like, you know, it's best for anybody else, but just by omitting what you know is best for you. So maybe it could be helpful to somebody else. Yes. Yep. Believe that. Right. Uh, all right, man. Well, uh, yeah, same goes to you. I enjoyed this conversation, and I appreciate that you uh, accepted me up on here. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. All right, man. Uh, take care, as always. I got to say, also, for anybody that wants their astrology report, hit this guy up. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to get mine, but I know that, like, I've seen all your posts and everything, and you have, like, so much knowledge about astrology, and uh, I look forward to, like, connecting with you more about that. Yeah, you said you live in, um, well, if you don't mind me putting it out there, I mean. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, right near um, Cheltenham. Yeah, like that's um, kind of like the Philadelphia area. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all right. All right, man, yeah, because I, I live in South Jersey, so, I mean, I'm like literally 30 minutes. Um, it's like a 30-minute ride. I'm actually in Philly right now working. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Cool, bro. We'll, we'll be in contact. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. All right. Peace, bro.